as we wrap up chapter five, we're going to ask kind of the last question, which is what other test do we have that can be used for convergence? That's kind of been the theme of chapter five. We started with the divergence test to see if the limit goes to anything but 0, then it definitely diverges. But if it goes to 0, it's inconclusive. So we could use the integral test. If we could take the integral easily, we could use a comparison test to see uh, what's happening compared to a known series, whether by dividing or being smaller or bigger than that known series. We then looked at, if we have an alternating series, what we can do in terms of converging absolutely. Or if it doesn't converge absolutely, does it converge conditionally because the terms are getting smaller each time? And then to wrap it up, we've got two more tests that I want to look at here today. The first one is called the ratio test. And the ratio test is particularly helpful with factorials. If we have factorials in the problem, you can pretty much bet the best way to get at convergence is by doing the ratio test. And here's what the ratio test says. We're going to let the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of all of our terms be the series that we want to see if it converges or diverges. And we're going to define Greek letter rho. It kind of looks like a p, but it's a Greek letter rho. Rho is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the n plus 1 term divided by the n term. And this is going to be useful because when we take that limit, one of three things is going to happen. If 0 is less than or equal to rho, which is less than, oops, not equal to, just less than 1, if we get a number that's less than 1 for rho, then the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of the entire series converges absolutely. Positive or negative, it will converge if rho is less than 1. If rho ends up being bigger than 1, then the series as n goes from 1 to infinity diverges. This is because if we're dividing and the next term is bigger, dividing will result in a bigger number than 1. However, there's a problem that comes out of this test. And that is, if rho equals 1, we get no information. It doesn't happen often, but that's kind of the worst case scenario. If rho ends up equaling 1, we need another test. So let's see if we can do some examples with the ratio test and see how it works out. Let's start by doing the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 3 to the n over n factorial. I mentioned that this test is best with factorials. So we define our row as the limit as n goes to infinity of, in the numerator, we replace n with n plus 1. We have 3 to the n plus 1. Actually, let's do it this way, over n plus 1 factorial. And then the denominator is just the a sub n term, which is 3 to the n divided by n factorial. Well, if we simplify this by multiplying by the reciprocal, we get rho is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times n factorial over 3 to the n, which is very interesting because n plus 1 factorial represents n plus 1 times n times n minus 1. Factorial multiplies by everything below it. Specifically, I could write n plus 1 times everything below it, which is n factorial. 
which is nice because then the n factorials would divide out, leaving behind an n plus 1. With the, with the 3's, 3 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n, we can subtract the exponents, and the 3 to the n divide out, and we're just left with 3. So we have now the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 over n plus 1. And we know as n gets huge, this becomes 3 divided by a huge number, which is 0. Well, if rho is 0, our ratio test tells us in letter A up there that if rho is greater than or equal to 0, therefore, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 3 to the n over n factorial converges absolutely. Actually, we could probably just say converges because there's no negative terms in this case. But we did determine from the ratio test that this first series converges. Let's do another example. Let's look at the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity. Let's take n to the n power over n factorial. Let's see what happens there. Well, now rho is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the numerators, the n plus 1 terms. So it's n plus 1 to the n plus 1 power over n plus 1 factorial divided by the regular series, n to the n power divided by n factorial. Well, if we multiply by the reciprocal, and I'm going to even break this um, up, the n plus 1 factorial, we're going to write that as n times n. Oops, sorry. We're going to write that as n plus 1 times n factorial. That way, it's going to match down there. And the n plus 1 to the n plus 1 power, I'm going to rewrite that as n plus 1 to the n times n plus 1. That way, when you add the exponents, you get that n plus 1. So now, multiplying by the reciprocal, we have n plus 1 to the n times n plus 1 over n plus 1 times n factorial times n factorial over n to the n power. And that's nice because one of the n plus 1's can divide out with the denominator. The n factorials can divide out. And we're just left with n plus 1 to the n limit as n goes to infinity, n plus 1 to the n over n to the n power, which if we play with this, we get n to the infinity. Both of those are to the n power, so we have n plus 1 over n to the n power, which is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. If I divide both terms by n, we get 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n power. But this guy, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the n power should look familiar. Way back when we talked about limits, we found out that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the n power, that goes to e. That's one way that we can define e is that limit right there. So the whole thing's equal to e, which is definitely greater than 1. It's almost 3, a little less than 3. And we know from the ratio test that if we're greater than 1, the series has to diverge. So therefore, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n to the n over n factorial diverges to infinity.
So a lot of these we massage algebraically to reduce so we can figure out the limit. Let's do one that's an alternating series before we step away from the ratio test. Let's consider the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times n factorial squared over 2n factorial. Well, rho, technically rho, we've been leaving it off on the past two. But technically, rho says it's the absolute value of the quotient. So because it's the absolute value of the quotient, we don't really need to worry about the negative 1 to the n part, because the absolute value will just always make it positive. So really, our numerator, we've just got n plus 1 factorial squared over 2 times n plus 1 factorial all over n factorial squared divided by 2n factorial. Well, as I simplify this, the 2 times n plus 1 is really 2n plus 2 factorial. So if we break that up, Counting down so that it'll divide out with a 2n factorial. That's really 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 times 2n factorial as it counts down. Similarly, the n plus 1 factorial squared is an n plus 1 squared times n factorial squared, just counting down and putting the squared on both parts because the whole thing is squared. So when we multiply by the reciprocal, oops, I forgot the limit as n goes to infinity. The limit as n goes to infinity of, we have n plus 1 squared times n factorial squared divided by n factorial squared. Oops. I'm getting ahead of myself. Finish out the first fraction. Divided by 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 times 2n factorial. And then multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2n factorial over n factorial squared. And let's see what we can divide out here. Uh, the n factorial squareds are gone. The 2 n factorials are gone. And that's it. So we've got the limit as n goes to infinity of, and let's go ahead and multiply out to that numerator, becomes n squared plus 2 n plus 1. Multiplying out the denominator, 2 n plus 2 times 2 n plus 1 is 4 n squared plus 6n plus 2. And we know that the larger exponents are going to take over. So it's going to become 1 fourth, which is less than 1. And so the ratio test tells us that if we're less than 1, it's going to converge absolutely. And we know if it converges absolutely, it also converges for the actual series. So the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times n factorial squared over 2n factorial converges absolutely. So that is the ratio test. Really helpful with factorials because it allows us generally to reduce out the factorials by just breaking up maybe the n plus 1 from the n factorial. Maybe we have to do a couple terms. And then if our row is less than 1, it converges absolutely. If it's greater than 1, it diverges. And we hope it doesn't equal 1 because then we have no information and we need another test.
A second test that's useful as we wrap up the chapter, though, is what's called the root test. And the root test is really helpful with powers of n. The reason it's helpful with powers of n is because it ultimately is going to take the nth root and get rid of that power of n. So let's let the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of a sub n be what we're looking for, trying to decide does it converge or diverge. And we're going to also define a row in this case. But here, rho is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. It's a terrible infinity. As n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of the a sub n term. If rho equals that, one of three things will happen. Very similar to the ratio test, if 0 is less than or equal to rho, which is less than 1, then the series converges absolutely. And if that row is greater than 1, then the series diverges. And just like last time, if rho is equal to 1, we have no information. So we'll have to use some other test to decide if it converges or diverges. Again, this root test is really helpful with powers of n. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Starting with taking the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 3n cubed minus 7n squared plus 1 raised to the n power all over 4n cubed plus 2n squared minus 1 all raised to the n power. Well, when I see those powers of n, we're going to use the root test with rho equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of our terms, 3n cubed minus 7n squared plus 1 to the n over 4n cubed plus 2n squared minus 1 to the n. And what's nice about that is the nth root takes care of those nth exponents as we take the nth root of the numerator and denominator. So we're left with the limit of 3n cubed minus 7n squared plus 1 over 4n cubed plus 2n squared minus 1. And we know the largest exponents take over, which is going to leave this with just 3 fourths. 3 fourths, which is less than 1. And the root test, just like the ratio test, tells us that if we end up with a limit, a row that is less than 1, the whole series converges absolutely. So therefore, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 3n cubed minus 7n squared plus 1 to the n over 4n cubed plus 2n squared minus 1 to the n converges absolutely. Whether positive or negative, it converges. Let's try one more example of the root test. Let's take the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n to the n power over the log, or let's do the natural log, the natural log of n raised to the n power. Again, rho is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. Because we have n powers, we're thinking the root test, where we take the nth root of n to the n over the natural log of n to the n power. 
Well, the nth root and the nth exponents will be inverses of each other, leaving us with just the limit as n goes to infinity of n over the natural log of n. The problem here is that as n goes to infinity, the numerator goes to infinity, and the denominator also goes to infinity. So what we'll have to do is use L'Hopital's rule, which says we can take the derivative of the top and bottom. The derivative of n is 1. The derivative of natural log of n is 1 over n, which means we have the limit as n goes to infinity. Multiplying by the reciprocal is just n. And as n goes to infinity, n goes to infinity, which is much larger than 1. And so the root test, just like the ratio test, tells us if rho is greater than 1, then the series, as n goes from 1 to infinity of n to the n over the natural log of n to the n power, diverges. So we have two tests today to wrap up our work with sequences and series, trying to decide if series uh, converge or diverge. We have the root test, which is good for powers of n, where rho is the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value. And we have the ratio test, where rho is the limit as n goes to infinity of the n plus 1 over the nth term. And that one's helpful with factorials. Once we do that and calculate our rho, the process is the same. If rho is less than 1, we converge absolutely. If rho is greater than 1, we diverge. If rho equals 1, we have no information. Take a look at the homework assignment and try a few of these, and we'll discuss them in class further and answer any questions that you might have.